Y'all ready to be history? It started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars. George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters. Voiceover talent and home studio guy. Right now, And welcome to another Pro Audio Suite. This week we have a special guest who, apart from being the product manager and also director of training at Waves, is also an audio engineer, producer, photographer, and now he's an author. Uh, would you please welcome Michael Pearson Adams, otherwise known in Australia as Gomez. That was a good intro. That's the best sound effect. Wait, 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 wait. hold on, hold on. Did hold you on. script that? That was brilliant. I was going to say, he's been rehearsing it for the last week since we knew you. Mate, I'm an ex-radio guy. I do this shit. <laughs> oh, look. Ex-radio The guy? roadcaster proves it's worth once again. There you go. Yeah. It's not a roadcaster. Yes. No, no, no. Jo- Robert's on a roadcaster. George is oh, on so, that. Oh, so there yeah. is somebody on a roadcaster. Yeah, okay, Robert. good. Yeah. Um, you know what's going to be really funny? <laughs> 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 In a few weeks, when I move back to Australia, there's going to be a ton of people calling me Gomez. And apart from you guys, I haven't had anybody call me Gomez in nearly 17 years. So mm. it's it's going to take a bit of adjustment when I get home. Well, it will get take a it, lot buddy. of adjustment get in many, many ways. <clears throat> Old yeah. habits die hard. They do indeed. There are some things I'm going to miss. Um, my, my car and the fact that I can actually afford one like this over here is one of them. Like so. supersizing your Macca's meal as well? Is that what? No, miss. no, just just the Range Rover. I'm gonna, right. miss, I'm genuinely gonna miss my Range Rover. It's, uh, but my car uh, cost me thirty eight thousand over here, and is uh, the exact same car, exact same kilometres, is one hundred and twenty thousand, roughly in Australia. Yeah, yeah, but that's Australian yeah, dollars too. Don't forget. <laughs> yeah, this is true. It's still expensive. Why? Why are cars so expensive in Australia? Tax, um, mostly. Tax, mainly. And, you know, obviously freighting them in and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's like got to come so. from overseas. We don't make our own cars anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, Range Rovers don't come from America. No, they don't. No, they don't. No. Indeed. It's also a numbers game. Like, I mean, America has over 300 million people in Australia. It doesn't. Um, <laughs> so that that kind of makes a difference as well. But can you imagine a world with 300 million Australians? Can you imagine uh, the 300 million people going, yeah, nah, nah, yeah. (laughs) It'd be, it'd actually be pretty fabulous. It'd be like the world would just be one big Australian lamb commercial. (laughs) It would be. (laughs) The world would be a lot more relaxed, I can tell you that much. Exactly. So at this recording, I'm currently at an Airbnb in Sundance, Utah. Uh, Two weeks ago, there was still about uh, three inches of of snow on the ground. Uh, And there was was a grill outside and the Airbnb host had said to me, it's like, you probably don't want to ever use that. And I was like, yeah, I guarantee you I will. I'm an Aussie. Uh, (laughs) I was was smoking a brisket while it was snowing overnight. Is that what they call them these days? (laughs) <laughs> and uh, the, the neighbours were fairly amazed. They, they they were kind of scared of me because they thought uh, he's obviously off his rocker. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, well, yes. Good for you, Gomez. Well Thanks, done. mate. So what do you guys talk about on this podcast? You well, talk about audio, I guess. You're, yeah, we do. And you're here to talk about you know, Wave's new little noise reduction gem. Clarity VX. Clarity VX. Yeah, yeah. Give us some background. Where, where, where did the idea come from? Because Waves have already got some pretty good noise reduction stuff. So what was the call that dragged you into developing this in the first place? First things first, uh, Clarity VX and Clarity VX Pro have been an idea. They went from an idea into development uh, of the actual artificial intelligence and neural networks to make it happen first. And then after we developed that and then worked out the pros and cons and failed and succeeded a few times, after we developed that, then we moved it on and came up with Clarity VX and Clarity VX Pro. But we're talking from idea, a seed of an idea, and us going, you know, it'd be really cool if we could use AI to do this, this, and this, to the actual plugins being released a few weeks ago. We're talking... 
years. It, yeah, years. It, we're talking about yeah. five years at least. So this is not a job where you have a, a product where you have a product manager and one guy coding. This is two products where the product manager, who's an absolute legend, but the, and a good friend of mine by the name of Shai Fishman, um, he led the charge. Um, but the amount of work from him and so many others in the company that's gone into this over years is ridiculously impressive. It's very rare for us to actually celebrate internally the release of a plugin. But when we released this, the entire company got together on a virtual call because it was just such an, an epic success to us having come up with this. So, and yes, we do have existing restoration tools that have been around for a while. And then we've got NS1. But th these two tools, uh, realistically, they wait, take, wait, they take like everything to a completely different. Yes. And then and then, and then then Z-Noise and X-Noise. Well, Z-Noise and X-Noise are literally like nearly 20 years old. Yeah, yeah. Well, Z-Noise and X-Noise are... They were never as good as even no noise. They were they were great, and they and they functioned. and And honestly, I was able to use them and never need to buy Isotope because um, it just worked well enough. But I did notice that even at the time when when we had access to no noise and the X noise, especially that one, you know, it was it wasn't quite as good. But the speed of a plugin, things like that, made it a lot better. Um, was it that much worse than uh, Isotope? No, not not enough to really buy it. But this seems much different because this isn't to me. I, I don't think this is noise reduction. This is no bringing a voice out. This is this is not about removing noise. This is about re extracting the voice. Well, actually, it's it's a bit of both. I mean, this is you're right. So you're, you're absolutely right. This is not about uh, noise reduction. This is uh, us using artificial intelligence to let you choose whether you keep the voice and identify the voice or remove the voice and keep what's behind the voice uh, or enhance either of them from a post-production and um, film dialogue uh, production point of view uh, that they, they've been using it for both so far. It's like, you know, and uh, yeah. people like Ron Bartlett have been going, okay, so the, there's a boom mic, but there's some great noise there. I need to bring that up so that I can actually put it behind the newer dialogue, etc. Or I need to clean this up. Um, it, it gets used for a lot, but those two neural networks working together is uh, it's it's a special kind of magic. Did the makers of the hair dryer want a royalty for their hair dryer? <laughs> uh, That's a Breville hair dryer. Come on. It's uh, I don't know where. Dan, I mean, I think that was actually Dan's. Dan Cooper's wife's hairdryer. Um, and it's it's like the vacuum, actually, so a few of those. So Dan Cooper is one of our guys who's based in the UK. Um, the vacuum cleaner was in his house. The hairdryer was in his house. The blender was in his house. Um, the traffic noise was uh, in the initial house. traffic video. No, it was actually initially in, in London, but I think we recorded one in New York too. We've gone everywhere with the, with, with the challenges for this because we didn't want to. So I tested it, I think, in a way that you guys didn't quite test it. And what we did is we recorded a pure voice, then we recorded noise, then I bounced them down and denoised yeah, the noise that. using clarity and then compared it to the pure noise, the pure vocal track. That was actually one of the first things that we did internally. Um, because and and then you know exactly what you're losing. Exactly. Getting, I mean that that yeah, that yeah. that's why it was one of the first things that we tested internally because we needed to know. Okay, so um, what's actually how do we fine tune this so uh, the absolute minimum, if if anything at all, is being taken away from the from the vocal. Um, and and I think the the biggest challenge for us was how to fit so much. Of, the, that technology into the smaller one that is more like a one knob plugin. It's like multi band, but the main thing is being able to turn the knob in the other direction because yeah. that single knobber is so it just works. One, one of the <laughs> there's a lot of value in that. One in of that. the interesting things about both of them that a lot of people haven't actually got to yet is how many stereo microphones there are out there. When you know, say for example, you've got vloggers or somebody recording a a vocal on a you know, anything from a microphone connected to, you know, a Zoom recorder or uh, mm -hmm. a, a phone microphone. It could be a stereo microphone and they might not even know it. So when you get that, 
uh, clarity can reduce the noise, but if it's stereo noise, then the noise in itself is going to be wide and stereophonic and inconsistent, and it's going to be disjointed in the left and right channels. So one of the things that we actually did was adding in, in the plugin, you'll find an analysis area, which is single or double. And uh, single applies the same neural network process to both the left and the right channels, but double applies two neural networks, one for the left channel and another completely independent one for the right channel. And it brings it in okay. and gives you a consistent mono signal with no artifacts. So there's like, I, I, th I think there's like process one and process two. Or band one, or well, you've got like one and two. Yeah, so you've seven, got two. Yeah. You've got two neural networks, um, and the two neural networks do things slightly differently. So br the band one is better at preserving uh, main and secondary voices um, when there's more than one voice in the recording, and band two is for really severe noises. It's also better at separating the main voice from the secondary background voices, but um, yeah, say, when there's... But, but it's a little bit more destructive in its process. Yes, it's a bit more severe. I mean, uh, yeah. but, but when I'm talking about the analysis mode, that's when you can choose to use a single or a double neural network to deal with stereo noise so that it's not kind of bouncing from channel to channel. Hmm. You need a really stable voice in the center, and that's one of the things that that we, we needed to attack because if you think about it, going forward from now, even the last couple of years, but going forward, there's so many more stereo microphones out there and, stereo, and ways of recording things that are in stereo just by default that people don't even think about, and it might not affect the voice, but it does affect what the noise is behind, depending on how they move, where they move, what's going on behind them. It will shift channels, and therefore the noise is inconsistent. We had to work out a way to deal with that. Well, I mean, if you're not dead center and then you mono up that stereo mic, it can even affect... Yeah. Depends on what type of stereo mic it is, but if you get any timing issues. Yeah. We had to work out how to do that without it being ridiculously CPU intensive. Um, it's Does stereo provide some op opportunities to better separate? Because I know there was one company that had a tetrahedron microphone, and they were doing a little bit of source isolation with it, and they were able to do it because they had so many capsules that they were able to... Uh, isolate better than if they just had a mono capsule. What two neural networks addressed to both the left and right channels each is going to do is it's going to line up and make the noise more consistent so, we, the, so the plug-in AI can remove it more consistently and stop the stereo image being so jittery and then center everything on that main vocal. And that's also where we have this little thing called width control. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's right next to analysis. So between those two neural networks and the width control, you can narrow in the stereo track so that you have no artifacts and a clean centered voice, which is pretty cool when you could do everything I just said and said in like five minutes, you can do it all in about 15 seconds. So, so how long until you teach the neural network other stuff and then make other plugins based on uh, like... Whatever. Here's a well. We're constantly doing that. I mean, one one of the the first things that you know we wanted to release was this because this. Yeah, I mean, with all with respect to the compliments and respect of our previous plugins like Z Noise, X Noise, NS One, etc. This is uh, an area that we haven't really dominated in the industry in quite a while. Correct. Um, yeah. we well, the first thing I said when I saw this was like. Someone at Isotopes having a meeting. Well, <laughs> I guess it's. Uh, I've got friends over there, and I've intentionally not called them because I I don't want it to be uncomfortable. It's it's it's. Um, but I really we really felt that we needed to uh, try and take over and redominate that specific section, and this is a hell of a good step in that direction. I gotta say that waves. I mean, in all honesty, between little things like individual companies grabbing sort of like an individual tranche, you know? Yep. Um, and then UA and then Plugin Alliance. It's like Waves has really seen a lot of pretty good competition, to be honest. Like there's there, there are like for a while, you know, like whatever, other some of the other companies that had big bundles and it wasn't a big deal. But there, there are some interesting things coming out of all those other companies. And so... You guys have definitely come out with a few things that were really interesting. And for instance, uh, 
you know, Chris Lord Allergy's um, or his delay and reverb side by side. I forget what it's called. Um, you know what I'm talking about? He's, he's, he's got his four sets of delays and his four reverbs. Yeah. In one plugin. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I do know what you're talking so about. Um, what you're, yeah. And it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. Like there's, you're talking about stuff coming out. You're talking about Epic and Echosphere. So Epic is the main yes. one and Echosphere yeah. is the smaller one. But the interesting thing is what we spend, I mean, if you take a look at the release cycle with us, we're spending more and more time in between releases to really focus on making sure that what we come out with isn't just another compressor or isn't just another yeah. something that that has a different logo on it. Where What we want to do is we want to move the audio industry forward in a bunch of different areas by creating solutions to problems that nobody else has. And Clarity VX and Clarity VX Pro Realistically, okay, on one hand, yes, uh, there are people out there who can say, yes, I can do that already. But what we're coming back with is, yes, you probably can, but uh, that's two and a half hours of your life that you're not going to get back, and we can help you do it in less than a couple of minutes. Well, there was the, um, about three years ago at NAB, a couple companies came out with the whole, like, unbake the cake, extract the extract the vocal from the mix, um, and rebalance it, but they all had to go to the cloud and use their servers, and then it would deliver back something that you could then tweak all the faders with. Right. And so, even then, I remember I was talking to some friends in post production, and they're like, you know, mm, this is for isolating the vocal and changing the mix, but this is also just isolate the vocal. And they they are already seeing this concept of it's not about noise reduction; it's about pulling that vocal out finding the voice and and pulling out what you want not getting rid of what you don't want and there is there's some audio engineers that were trying trying to abuse those systems but here's like something that the unbake the cake thing and but here it is like pointed at a specific problem instead of I want to remix the Beatles. Right. Or But on the yeah. remixing side, I mean, one of the questions you asked a few minutes ago is, you know, what else are you going to do with the AI? We've already done that. Right. We released <laughs> we released it before Clarity. We released uh, a ridiculously revolutionary artificial intelligence powered sample finder called Cosmos um, mm-hmm. that uses AI to scan your entire drive, work out not only what samples are there from every other company on planet Earth, but then categorize them by brightness, by length, by tone, tempo. by tempo. Well, yeah, to a point tempo. We limited it to a certain length for loops because it's not a loop creator. Um, but, but it you know, we you can actually look at things within – cosmos in such a way that realistically people have never really been able to look at their samples before if you go into cosmos view you can actually identify by instruments by monophonic by bright by acoustic instruments by what's percussion by i mean there's so many different color tags and things you can use and just and then just drag through them and as you hit one if you hit one of the little color dots in cosmos it will play the sample for you and then if you you add that to create CR8 Creative Sampler, which is a whopping ten bucks right now. Um, the the two of those, the artificial intelligence between them both, is ridiculously powerful. So, Gomez, how does that compare to Mixing Key? I, I I'm sorry, I hadn't heard about this before, but I I use Mixing Key here for radio imaging and stuff. By Captain how plugins. Do- yeah. So how, yeah. how do they compare? Like, because mixed in uh, this studio edition I use, and it does a similar thing. It scans your hard drives and looks at all your songs and samples and stuff and categorizes them. Is it too? Did, um, you may not even be aware of it, but I- if you are, is it dissimilar? To no, that? I own it. Um, it. It's. I mean, I own. I own everything by mixed in key by Captain Plugins yep. because one of the things that we always make sure that we do is we know. What else is out there? So at least one of us in each department owns pretty much everything of every company yeah. in, in any of our domains. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, there are sample finders out there that identify things. What there wasn't out there until Cosmos was a AI-powered sample found, finder 
that was this advanced that it could split things and analyze them into this many pieces with such ease and with such speed right. um, and play them instantly. This is a different, this is also designed at a different kind of, um, the Pro Tools version of Mixed in Key, I mean, the studio version is aimed, um, it's not aimed at quite the same crowd. What we're aiming at is we're aiming at people who are doing everything from wanting to know where their samples are, but also we're looking, we're giving people the chance to really create new ideas because if you take Cosmos as a sample finder and then you uh, spend 10 bucks on CR8 Creative Sampler, you've got eight layers of samples there that you can create a multi timbre sample of your own. Um, and the AI working between them does it really flawlessly and really seamlessly. And it just, it, it's like having a, a hardboard, you know, a hardware workstation in front of you. It's pretty freaking cool. What was one of the interesting things was um, I had somebody from one of the uh, Clear Channel stations uh, email me and said, uh, this is just for music people. I was like, hell no. It's like, I've, I've been using this for uh, videos to, you know, find the right kind of white noise or sample for uh, background, for rises, for downers, for impacts, etc. It's like, it makes it so much easier to find stuff. Yeah, right. Okay. You sold me. So, I mean, so all this is using AI and, and the, you know, AI is nothing, it's funny, isn't it? We're in 2022 and I'm saying AI is nothing new. Um, whereas I think it was only three years ago, I was like Googling, what is artificial mm -hmm. intelligence? <laughs> so, but I remember neural networks coming up in the very early 2000s and there was a company that, oh, what was the name of it? They, they had a neural network uh, audio software, and it and it, it was one of the first ones I was trying to unbake the cake. Uh, it didn't do such a good job, by the way. There's actually, yeah, there's, I mean, it, yeah, there's there's a few very very interesting experiences out there with AI. Like, I mean, one of the ones is one site called L A L A L dot AI, so Lalal dot AI, and. They do a ridiculously good job of extracting vocal accompaniments and various instruments from any audio file, and they'll let you test it for free. Um, you know, just drag any song that you really like. Like, I mean, the first song I dragged on was Crazy by Seal. And I said, okay, I want you to pull all the drums out. And it pulled all the drums out. I said, okay, I want you to pull the vocals out. I just want you to pull the guitar out. And it did. Wow. Wow. Um, I, I mean, cl clarity in most cases for musicians and vocalists and, and voiceover guys, clarity VX is going to be enough. The, the beautiful thing about clarity VX and clarity VX pro is they both use the same neural network. So you are going to work out if the kind of work you're doing is, is too intense for one and then have to step up to the other. But, um, for a, for a, a plugin that's got a, a, you know two or three knobs and a couple of settings, it's pretty voodoo magic what what that AI can do. And if you're doing audio and video, then Clarity VX um, on your microphone while you're on camera, you're about a frame and a half out, but it's not enough to notice it. Um, so I had Clarity VX turned up nearly all the way so uh, I could keep the power drills and the, the power vax out of my masterclass today. I did buy Clarity VX and then I used it on, well, attempted to use it on Twist in Wave and it doesn't work. So as you know, uh, any software company out there has a list of software platforms that it is qualified with. The first ones we have to look at, we have to look at the bigger ones uh, that take up the majority of, of people's workflow. Um, when we get a chance, we do start to look at the, the, the smaller and more niche ones um, like Twisted Wave. In this case, I don't know where we're at with that because I'm not product manager for this specific product. But uh, it, yeah, it takes some time because there's there's a lot of platforms out there, guys. Um, yeah, and more platforms than the seventies, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bum, bum. Um, well, uh, I, I have a theory why it's not working. Ah, hit me. But I don't have the details because it's not real time. 
No, it's because you might be running. Okay, what what hardware are you running it on? Is it Intel or is it uh, Silicon? Yeah, what what are you running it on, Andrew? Um, I have no idea. What am I Mate. running it on? If it's an M1 Silicon based Mac. You have to run Twisted Wave in Rosetta mode unless the plugin natively supports the new Silicon architecture. So, uh, um, well, I, well, it's a t- my Mac. It's just a MacBook uh, Pro. Intel. Did it um, get hot yeah. and make a fan noise when you use it? Yes, it does. Then it's not the new computers. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's not it. It rules that. I'll rule out that possible reason why it doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> Yes, it's kind of weird. It, like it, like all the other Waves plugins on Twisted Wave work. Um, yeah, but for some reason, Clarity VX doesn't, and it, it, it makes like it just goes glitchy when I when I sort of turn on the Clarity VX. It just gets this glitchy thing. I going saw on, someone so. else. Uh, I saw on the Twisted Wave Mac, the Twisted Wave uh, Facebook group that um, somehow some are using it and some are not using it successfully. So oh. that's interesting. So there's a mixed bag of users all on Twisted Wave, some with success and some, some without. without. Yeah. So it may yeah. be OS related, it may be hardware driver related. There's I think I think one of the things that the you guys all pretty much know is when you when you are a software and hardware company, especially in a domain like audio or video, there comes a point where uh, you have to get the software out there. Um, We go through hundreds and hundreds to nearly thousands of beta testers before we actually release. But there's always something that will come up um, from somewhere, from someone that we had never seen before. Every company has that. Um, yeah. If if you know if we tried to fix everything before for everybody before release, then nobody would ever release anything. So when it comes to this, this is one of those things. Why you know in Wave Central sometimes you'll open it up and it'll say, "Hey, there are updates," and you click on the little i icon and it'll tell you these plugins are being updated and usually it's because we've either improved them or we've fixed something that somewhere somewhere in the universe had as an issue okay so how does this sound right now are you hearing cars and little no like whatever noise yeah. from me yeah the noise right. is fading okay, out okay so so here's here's without clarity and then here's with clarity and how do i sound perfect wow, wow. nice everything's gone <laughs> yeah very cool so this is this is the reason why I used it today for my live cool. event because it actually pulls everything behind me out. It's perfect. So I'm I'm back to I'm back to writing trains and doing the podcast, Robbo. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you're using Clarity, yeah, that's okay. Be, that's fine. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. All right. Well, Rick Wasserman, when we got on the plane to Atlanta today, said, "Never fails. You get your butt in the seat and you get a booking." And I was like, oh, "Well, always. we're not recording it here, but uh, that would be the next test. Can we record?" <laughs> On an airplane. On a plane. Yeah. And pull the plane noise So out. W- one of the videos that's coming out in the next, because we have a bunch of content about how to use Clarity VX and Clarity VX Pro and all the different applications you can use it for and all of the different things we've tried it with. One of them is me on a plane doing a voiceover. Oh, okay, cool. Killer. And one of uh, and, and when I say on a plane doing a voiceover, I start doing the voiceover while they're still doing the safety check. No, nah, nice. Nice. Um, the the flight attendant was a bit annoyed with me because she could see me holding a microphone up to my mouth and she thought I was just making fun of it, but I wasn't. I was recording this <laughs> test. And the other one was while uh, the captain was talking and then also while there was standard noise. And, and, and that's because this is one of those plug-in releases where there are instant things that people go, oh, I know what I can use that for. But it's very hard for everybody to realize the amount of things that Clarity VX and Clarity VX Pro can do that we've tested it with without us actually showing them and going, oh my God, I'd never thought of that. Mm. Um, And especially when it comes to voiceovers and post-production, this, as our learned friend has just worked out with the plugin in Reaper, um, has many, many, many applications of fixing different things that you wouldn't usually even consider letting somebody record under those conditions. I mean, think about it from a podcaster's point of view. You, you know, you have your setup, you've got your microphone, you've got your uh, little room, but you're recording somebody on Zoom and they happen to be in a coffee shop. 
Um, what are you going to do about that? Are you either not going to do the podcast or are you going to use the plugin like Clarity VX or Clarity VX Pro and clean it up? So, just give us a rundown. The difference between VX Pro and VX, what am I getting for my extra bucks? Clarity VX actually comes with Clarity VX Pro. It gives you a whole new level of control. So, it gives you the ability to separate out into not only visualize exactly where the noise is, either in the uh, clarity AI mode, mode or with the meter on or with them off, but you actually have the ability to go in solo each of the, the bands that we give you, each of the four bands, and actually fine tune, okay, I want to suppress this part of the noise, but I want to raise the level of it. So say, for example, if you find that the there's uh, the top part of a, of a guy talking at a speech, for example, is that top high end frequency. But without that, it makes it sound like he's bit crunched, which is what a lot of noise restoration tools have done in the past. Then, and the noise, I mean, that frequency also has noise behind it. What you can actually do is you can suppress the noise, but you can also raise the level of that specific area right. with while you're suppressing the noise to bring up that part of the timbre of his voice again. Well, and then the VX Pro has the removal. It, the knob goes negative as well as yeah, positive. Yeah, so that's the other the, thing is like with VX Pro, you know, you, you, one of the things I said at the beginning was the part of the magic of this technology is you. it's not just removing background from vocals. It's a case of, okay, I might not want the dialogue. I might just want the background. So the knob goes all the way to the right for the voice and all the way to the left for the ambience. Ah. Um, and then you can go even further. You actually actually have another knob called an, uh, an ambience gate. And then you could choose how much you're processing as well. And then you even have a knob for reflections. So, and then you can also flip between the different neural networks. There's a, one of the, the important parts about AI that we've added in is a refresh button. So mm -hmm. as you move through the section that you're cleaning up or you're controlling, the AI is learning about it as you're going. Um, sometimes you're going to try something and it may work, but it's like, you know what? I just want to tweak something else. So you refresh the neural network with the little refresh icon that everybody is familiar with and then try it again and go for a different angle. So the amount of control is you it, have is over it this always is- Is it always guaranteed to act exactly the same or is there a little bit of like randomness in this? No, well, it learns as it goes. I mean, part of the fact that the, the thing about this is- Right, right. so you, like, you, you do a session, you close the session, you open it back up, you play it. Oh, that should. Do you get the exact same result or is it going to kind of like, oh- It's going to be, it's, no, it's going to be awfully close. Uh, awfully close but theoretically it could be different right it could be slightly different but it's not yeah, but yeah. it's it's uh it's not going to be dramatically different it's not like you're mm -hmm. it's not like you're going to have to teach it all over again right so when this is all produced robo will have removed all of the reverberation and slap back from <laughs> yeah that's Michael's right that's room. once gomez gives me my free so you copy, guys aren't going to hear it right, right? So yeah you guys won't hear the slap back we're getting from mm -hmm. The Somebody's headphones, that he's which, in. which is a lot on the on the gate thing too. I I did notice the gate was pretty gatey at times, but the the pro version seems to like like you can control that gate on each band separately on the pro version, right? Yes, you can. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, actually, on the on the other version, there is no gate. There's, so. um, I mean, the, the the you know, you also have just the the presence of a reflections control and an, uh, and an ambience gate, even one of those knobs gives you a hell of a lot of control over exactly what, what's happening. It, it's not, we didn't call it a deverb because it's not a deverb. Um, it, it, it deals with the frequencies, so to speak. So, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to hold on to whatever it is you're trying to hold on to. So we can't just label it and tell it, okay, get rid of the reverb in a room or the acoustics in a room because that's not the way we wanted it to work because then you're just leaning more towards holding on to the dialogue again. And this is a tool that lets you do both. Mm. So it is. How, I mean, how well will it work with early reflections? The stuff that makes like a small, small room sound like a box. 
It, it actually does quite a good job. But one of the other things that, you know, you need to take into account as well, and sometimes one of those times where you may want to compress something first to bring up something in the audio that you want to get rid of so that the AI has a better idea of what the thing to get rid of is and has a better chance of removing it. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. Well, well isn't there one example... In the uh, in the list yes. of like you know hey check this out where someone's like that was louder than the voice yeah like whatever it was removing was louder than the voice. yeah Ron Bartlett did that I think said that yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he was giving examples from Dune which is just cool in itself um, but but one of the things that when we went through a lot of this with different post production people was you know we're finding that sometimes um, with anything if you know what your end goal is it's like okay I can hear the noise there I know what needs to be gone maybe if I compress this a bit or EQ this a bit so that that noise is a bit easier for the AI to deal with then clarity can deal with it a bit more effectively in a way that I want it to um, so you know, think thinking outside the box as while you're letting this do its thing is also a good idea. Holding its hand almost. Wow. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to play with it now. I mean, I've been trying to download my crappy Wi-Fi hotel room, and it's not, it's not finished. And I'll, I'll try it later. But um, I'm very excited to, to play with it. I, and I'm I'm excited to see what the neural network AI engine can do to start learning the bad acoustics of a three and a half by four foot box that a lot of voiceovers are recording because once you start training it in these bad acoustical environments, it's going to start learning these terrible rooms that we're all, that so many voiceover actors are stuck inside of. And that's going to be awesome. Yeah. That's one of the beautiful things about having VCA control over all four bands and being able to adjust that global noise reduction uh, and the processing amounts, but being able to maintain the ratio of the multiband settings as well means that you can pretty much create a setting specifically set to your room. Say, for example, one of the guys, uh, the, well, a friend of mine who runs the Microsoft Studios <laughs> in Redland, Red, uh, Redmond, Washington, has already worked out that with a bunch of different remote voiceovers that get brought in and who voice in different places, Clarity VX and Clarity VX Pro, they can set up different settings specifically and just patch them onto that voice when it comes in because those people are always in their same space. Think about it. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I love Studio Rack so much as a, as a free plug-in chainer is because it gives you the ability to go, okay, right, so um, I, I have this for Bob, I have this for Andrew, I have uh, this for Robert, I have this, this setting here of a rack of plugins. So I've started saving racks of Studio Racks, I mean, Studio Rack settings with Clarity VX or Clarity VX Pro in them that also has in the chain for that specific vocal, whether it's me or somebody else, uh, EQ, compression, and, and tweaks so that it actually is a full set that becomes one setting. Yeah, I, I do this for a living. Like, I do these yeah. for people day in, day out. Yeah. So if I could be able to start dealing with a, a booth that rhymes with the name localruth.com and it's horrible acoustics because of the <laughs> cheap two-inch foam that's used as wallpaper. And I could go in there and say, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, you're in one of those. So I just need to do this, this, this. Okay, you're set. You're done. We're going to add more presets as we go as well. You're going to find a lot more presets being added as because we, we continue to teach our neural networks in, in waves. Right. And we, they continue to improve how they deal with different situations. So the the future is bright and rosy and very exciting from from where we sit right now. I, I want to see presets that say, and I know this is a very specific use case, but I want to say presets that say three and a half by five by six at point eight foot <laughs> box. Uh, you know, like that. So you just want because them to do your job for you, George? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Right. Yeah, you can do an <laughs> unboxing plugin. Exactly, like an <laughs> yes, unboxing exactly. plugin. Um, you know, and, I, and I'm not a Waves Mercury bundle. I don't know the Waves suite, but do you guys already have a plugin that you can type in something like the dimensions of a space, and it will then already no. know where all the modes are, and we can start, you know. No, uh, and the like speaker design software. We, it's not really an area that so far we felt like we needed to touch. What we do have is we have 
rooms to listen to and mix in in headphones, which we call the NX series. Yeah. Like, so you can mix in Abbey Road Studio 3 or uh, Chris Lord Algae Studio or Ocean Way in Nashville. And that's technology that we're continuing to uh, improve and enhance and we will we'll get to a point. But when it comes to actual room dimensions, that's kind of... I think if we release something like that, I think I think a few people would be going, Waves release what? Yeah, I mean, well, the thing is you would be the first one to do it, right? I'm asking you because if it existed, I'd already be using it. Yeah, well. Right? Like I would be using it every single day because what I do now is people, what I'm going to start doing, because I, I do it all by ear, right? It's people send me recordings. I do little notches and you're, dips. You're going gonna to build a catalog of EQs for specific Well, I have tons of them, right? But, but they're not cataloged, and yeah. it's just random. But what if I- Especially what if, if people put the mic in the same place. Yeah. Well, what if I you know, was able to, when I say, okay, send me your sample and send me your room dimensions, please. Thank you. Now I can go and type into my room mode calculator. Okay, here's where all my room nodes are. Now I know where to dip the EQ, a watt narrow notch at 160 and, you know, these different frequencies. Again, I do it by ear, but man, it sure would be quick and very precise to be able to type that in and get those frequencies where I need to notch. I'd quickly. be interested to see how Clarity VX Pro could handle some of those things that you just listed off. Because part of what it does is it is it does clarify, it, it does kind of spruce it up a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It, I, mean, just, it, it, yeah. I mean, one of the things that we, we gave it, one of the reasons that it has four separate bands is to achieve a much more perfect end result. So, and each band has five controls. They've got noise reduction, processing the amount. Uh, they can be soloed. They can be bypassed. Um, you've got delta and pure gain, and you, you've then got the presence and you've got the ambience. Um, so, you, you have this ability to really tweak and then, as I said, add that in with the refresh. It's like, okay, so that didn't work. Let me try it. Let me just reset its brain for a second. And let's go back and try these two parts of the multiband and focus that in there and see how that works. Think of it like a plugin that you can constantly say, okay, right, I want you to forget everything I just told you. Let's start this again. Uh, and it's still quicker than a lot of the other stuff that's out there on the market right now because it's doing it with AI that really is, when we say groundbreaking, we're not bullshitting. It's groundbreaking. The hardest Indeed. part about selling a tool that's so groundbreaking is explaining why it's worth what you're paying for because it's like it's, if, unless you understand why it's so groundbreaking, when it's on super duper sale, it's a, it's a no brainer. Like right now, you know, you guys, it's too late by the time you hear this. The super duper sale ends in eight hours and thirty eight minutes. But on on <laughs> Cla not on the big one on Clarity VX it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, the, the big one's going to stay at the option on that one. If you go to the, if you go to the Clarity VX Pro page, you're not going to see a countdown. Okay. Okay. That's at this point stick in time. For a while. So okay. so let let me present this to you though. So um, for the amount of power that you have with Clarity VX Pro and the amount of time that it doesn't take to either learn how to use the tool or actually fix the audio, even at its retail price of uh, between seven and 800 bucks, depending on where you are in the world and currency conversion. It's worth it. It's still half the price, if not less, than the, com the competing yeah. company's advanced pack that takes hours. Yeah. And, and, true, I, and true. I mean that in the nicest possible way. It's like this is something that we've put a ton of work into because we want to we want to come back mm. and into this domain and give people tools that let them the get the work done. The only difference there is, and, is and that it's not necessarily as broad of a. It's a very specific tool for for vocal denoising and vocal. You know, like there's no declicking broadband denoising of non-vocal stuff. So it, it is a very pointed. There's no reason why because it's an AI engine. It couldn't be. Learning and well, this particular version is is, vo is vocal oriented. That's right. What but I, said. I mean, like, like when, when I'm thinking of declicking, I'm thinking about if I want to remove mouth declicks. If if Clarity VX Pro learns that mouth declicks are not part of the mm -hmm. vocal signature, because it's it's AI driven and because it's a learning engine, 
can't it not learn to remove or re- pull the voice out of the clicks so the clicks start to disappear? Yes, it pro- of course it, it can. It, 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 like That's all I was saying. Teach it different things, and it can do amazing right. stuff. And we may do that, but I can't say yes or no. Yeah. Right, right. You can't say that now. <laughs> but it's the next logical extension. and Because once you have yes. that kind of power in the, in, in the algorithm and in the tool, I know it's not just an algorithm now. It's just it's a whole other I'll tell paradigm. you what, it's exciting and scary at the same time. I think that one of the things that that somebody came at me with a couple of days ago that I thought was interesting, they, I, I got somebody came at me in a chat on something I was doing. I do so many demos, I forget. And he was like, "Yeah, thanks for taking half my work away from me." And I was like, "What?" And he goes, "Right, exactly. That's well, the scary like, part." It's like- um, he goes, "Well, you know, I charge hourly," and I said, uh, "And and my." I thought about it for a second after I'd done the initial thing of, oh, geez, sorry, mate. And I thought about it and I thought, I think we're entering, and feel free to debate me. It's like I'm, I, I have my feet kind of balanced on the walls of so many industries right now. <laughs> but, yeah. but from my perspective, even from the music side, what people are starting to pay for is a result, not the amount of time that it takes to get that result. Yes. No one ever said change the way you charge. Right. When you know, you know, when you make plugins, with, this is something we had with Source Connect, where everyone was like, "I don't want to drop ISDN because I can charge people through the nose for it." And we're like, just because it's running over the internet doesn't mean you charge less for it. I mean, you have savings, you have flexibilities. This is to help you do your job better. But we've not at all suggested. But immediately, people began charging less. We, um, um, I mean, because, what, we created oh. OneNode plugins and, and, you know, ha- half of my masterclass mm-hmm. today was OneNode plugins on how to fix things fast and how to mix in an organized manner. We created the artist signature series where you get a chain from a well-known artist's, uh, uh, you know, channel, uh, but we don't tell you what's mm-hmm. in them. And the reason we don't tell you what's in them is because we don't see that it actually makes a difference. It's like, we want to give you a result fast. Um, but when we did that, a lot of the the smaller guys that were coming at us saying, "Oh, it's like this is making it too hard. It's making, I mean, it's because it's making it too easy." But a lot of the people who work constantly are saying, "It just means that we we can use those tools on jobs that aren't paying as much and still get the best result and give better results for the clients, um, but take less time because they're paying less. But at the same point, put the same amount of work in that we do it in the same amount of attention to detail for the." for the the ones that have that pay rate. So they haven't changed their pay rate either. Um, And and you're right, Robert. It's like, you know, we we don't make these tools to make people charge less. We make these tools to improve people's lives. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're not just, people aren't just paying you for the noise reduction. They're paying for you to produce and mix their spots. There's a big difference. Yeah. There, you know. I think one of the things that's really uh, important to us as well uh, especially when we're coming out with tools like this, um, think of it less as speed and ease of use and more about letting people focus on the creativity and not worrying about the technology that's de- that's going on behind it. Um, it. It's one of the magical things that we all aim for in this kind of industry where we're creating these kind of tools. What we don't want is people thinking, oh, is it going to crash? Is it going to glitch? Is it going to do that? So when we create something as fluid as Clarity VX and Clarity VX Pro, the idea is to to let people work with them and forget how amazing the technology is behind it because it's doing it so well. Yeah. God, I should I should write that down. That was brilliant. We'll send you a copy. So 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 did I ever tell you my experience with the uh, uh, the 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 vocal backing or the vocal processing plugin? And I was um, just kind of doing somewhat of a mix, kind of a rough mix, but not for for this band. And it, it was just like a local band, like a no big deal thing. But um, I was kind of spending some time on it. And a friend of mine was just sitting in the studio at the same time. He was kind of doing his own thing. And he has, he's mixed a bunch of stuff. Like he's got, he's got gold records on the wall kind of, kind of type. And um, he's just like, CLA vocals. I'm like, nah. And I'm like piling up a bunch of delays and reverbs and stuff. He's like, CLA vocals. And finally, the third time I'm like, all right. And I just like throw it on. And I was like, push a fader, push. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's It's like, I didn't want to admit it. No, the thing that I've been doing for the last 15 years, it's like, that was at least as good as all of that. Well, Gomez mentioned the one knob stuff, you know, it's like, I regularly use stuff like, um, 
One knob brighter. I mean, Jesus. One knob brighter is great. One those knob, times one when you just want fatter. something to yeah. kick, yeah, and fatter. Those when I mean, you just want something to kick a bit more in the mix or, or cut through a bit more. I regularly reach for those two. Um, one knob filter I use all the time in when I'm doing sort of mixes and you know beat mixes and stuff in promos or whatever else. Um, yeah. regularly, they have a pretty low so DSP or handy. CPU overhead. They have Absolutely. a huge, they have a hugely low C- CPU uh, requirement. Yeah. One of the things that's also really important about these kind of tools when we make them is these kind of tools think about it one of the things that's come along with digital audio for all us old people who remember what tape machines were um is back when we were working on tape and a mixing console with no screen our ears were doing all of the work a lot of the people who have come into the industry whatever part of the audio industry from voiceovers through to records in the last 20 years haven't known anything but a screen. So their eyes are doing more work than their ears half the time. If you think about Mm -hmm. it, a one knob plug-in forces your ears to do a hell of a lot more work because you have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, you have, you have one expectation, but there's details within, within that expectation Yeah, that you're not really able to control. So you're, you're able to um, kind of focus on just the one thing that you're looking for, not trying to figure out what you're looking for in the first place. But dates how long I've been with working with Waves now. I think it was in 2007. Um, a mate of mine, Skip Burrows, who owned a mm-hmm. big studio in Houston, Texas, with a bunch of SSLs in it, and I did a, a masterclass. And one of the parts of the masterclass was we wanted to prove to these kids exactly how – much their eyes were doing the work on their audio mixes because they didn't believe us. So what we actually did was we took the SSL 4000 G channel and we got them to do the EQ for a vocal in a mix on the G channel plugin that we'd released um, six months prior or something like that. And then we got them to then try and duplicate that EQ setting on the console um, mm-hmm. where they were suddenly <laughs> using their ears and looking at knobs and not look it's, and uh, the, the, the outcome was predictable to us, but uh, to many people it wouldn't be predictable because they would think that knobs in different places would be the same thing, but it's not. They struggled to find it. I bet yeah. they did. Yeah, absolutely. This is an interesting story. I, I went to school originally for architecture and um, we were, doing some freehand drawing and they, and they just had something to copy. And one of the things they had us do is take whatever it is that we're drawing and turn it upside down. Oh yeah. I know that. So you're no longer interpreting it as a face or a building or whatever. And you're just looking at lines and now draw that and then take what you drew and turn it right side up. And you're like, Holy cow. It's amazing. I've I've (laughs) seen a few. When I was studying art as well, we did the same thing where we were doing, um, a portrait, and he had to copy a portrait. We did it up, up the right way, and it was pretty crap. Turn right. it upside down, <laughs> and it's fine. It was pretty it's amazing. Pretty. We are yeah. one big step closer to not really having to be so overly concerned about the acoustics of our vocal booths. Is I think is where yeah. we're getting, and and now it's going to be like, should I buy a two hundred fifty dollar plug in, or should I buy a few more three thousand dollar booths? Yeah. Well, yes, well, right. that yeah is the yeah. room tone. How much of the room tone is going to be an issue now, or it's, can it vary it's, a it's lot? It's more of an right? ambience signature that it's 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 grabbing too. It's yeah. it's not so much the the tone. I I think it's the uh, that's what's kind of mind blowing. Yeah, but just I to mean, step we actually back, just to step back on what you said, George. I I, I agree um, that maybe the question is becoming. You know, how much do I need to do? But, I mean, at the top of the tree, surely your aim is to still not to have to use this stuff at all. I this, mean, right. this is all high fructose corn syrup and not sugar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's a great analogy. You're right. I mean, surely at the end of the day, the aim is still to be able to record without this stuff. Right. But yeah. having it, yes, is a godsend. Yeah. yeah, I mean, let's be clear. Like, as a voice actor, talking to you now, voice actors, your job is to not polish turds all day long. Your yeah. job is to capture the best audio you possibly can. If you are trying to produce something and you have to send in a finished product, and I know a lot of voiceovers these days 
are saddled with this. They, they, you know, their client is expecting finished audio. This tool could be uh, a godsend, especially if you're a road warrior. This, this is a lifesaver. This, yeah, I, I can think of so many times where I used to use, you know, I, I used to have C4 expanding before I send it into, uh, you know, X noise. Yeah, and an amalgamation and of your latency was about about 400 oh, milliseconds yes. is huge. <laughs> so you're burning it in with audio suite once you get your settings and, and it's harder to automate and yeah. it was really hard to automate noise floors so if you were shifting noise floors yeah. that was another thing and and this is like producers so are going to much more appreciate what this can do and the, the voice actor will go oh that's nifty uh, and but the quality yeah, level is so much better yeah. I mean X noise could get very MP3 ish if if you pushed it too hard, so you were always just going like I reduced the noise, but it's still there. But I did it in a way that it doesn't right. make it sound like an it MP3. was. It, it used to get to a point where you would bit crunch the crap out of stuff. Um, right. Yeah, it sounds you like you're underwater with a sock in your mouth. One one of like, the okay. ways that I like to think of technology like this, I mean, to answer the to give you my answer to the question, you know, do we need all this expensive stuff? Is yes, we still do. The um, Andrew is still going to talk into the microphone that he prefers in the space he prefers because that's how Andrew does what he does so well. Um, Thank you. You know the you know the all of the voiceovers they're still going to do what they do. I consider uh, Clarity VX and Clarity VX Pro as the tools that you have to clean up things that are beyond your control and you have as redundancy um, as a voiceover so that if you do have to do something in a hotel room, you've got it covered. Um, yep. the, the, the best part of all this technology to me is it's got to be the best edit or the best recording that nobody noticed was any different to your last one. And exactly. that's where clarity comes in handy because it does such a bloody good job of defining what you ask it to define, whether it's um, the ambience and no voice or whether it's the voice with no ambience. Um, the AI will work it out for you. Um, unless you're in a train station on the platform um, and, you know, the trains are going past in London, then we might just say you're being unfair. Um but even then, it's still. I mean, we, even then, I was going to say it's like like. We, I mean, one of the first do things that would yeah. just be start over and re-record or ADR everything, and it's like you know what you can you can get away with some stuff with this. With many things, if there's another background in there, like okay, so if if you got a lot of noise to pull out, and now you have a solo voiceover, there's no music or no, anything behind there, might be a little bit harder, and it still is not bad. But as soon as you put a music track behind it, or it's an actual music track where the music is a lot louder, so the voice is less, even less exposed because it's more sit- seated in the mix. I mean, it's not the ideal thing. You want to get a clean vocal in the first place. But if right. someone hits the magic take, you know, like whatever, it was recorded in a room on, and, and there was a the refrigerator in the background because it was just supposed to be a scratch vocal. And that one line, they're just never going to get it again. It's like, you've got it. This, yep. Yeah. Yeah, you've got it. Yeah. Okay, so Robbo, you That's wanted to know about my book. Well, we're 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 in, we're an hour and a half into this episode. We should probably get it over and done with, but we can't let <laughs> we can't let Gomez disappear without telling us about his fucking book. I've had a few people push me to write this, and then uh, over the last ten years, and I finally thought, okay, I'll write it. Assholes. And um, I'm actually okay. So I come on, hate give us the title. Give us the title first, because it's fucking the- killer. So the title of this book is "Fuck It." What's the worst that could happen? I love it. Um, <laughs> um, and and the reason that it is that title is because b- right before every scary move I've made in my life and taken a risk to go and ask somebody for something or say yes to something in my career or yes, I could do something, um, and I've thought, okay, I could fail. I could embarrass myself I could fuck this up it's always come down to be going fuck it what's the worst that could happen Um, and then I just did it so and the amount of times you know somebody says can you do that and I'm like yes Uh, and then I've had to (laughs) work out how to do it it's like but that's kind of what's moved me forward and one of the things that I wanted to do was give people in the age of social media where it seems to have been 
uh, somehow the, the social media has become the place where people laugh at other people trying to do things and looking like they're failing, even when they're just trying to improve. People are starting to get more embarrassed and more scared to actually even put their f- hand forward and go, I'm going to put my hand up and I'm going to try this. I want to try and help just affect somebody's life where I can go convince them to go, you know what, fuck it, yeah, what what is the worst that could happen? And and just move forward in life because there are so many things we can do these days and we're all so connected, but I feel like the world is getting more disconnected while we're getting connected because people are seeing so many other people be laughed at online in this ultra-connected way. So I've written this book and I've got stories about my life in it as examples, but I've also got like stories which are more the book is more like a conversation it's more like i'm sitting in your in your living room with you you've just given me a tequila and i'm telling you my life story and giving you examples but i'm bringing with me friends like my one of my best mates eddie kramer the guy mixed and recorded uh hendrix and led zeppelin so i've got stories from him in there i've got stories from another few people that i'll keep secret and it's all linked up with a course a self-paced course which is aptly called the fuck it method (laughs) 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 and there's nothing on it right now but they will be by the time this website this podcast goes on i actually managed and with all luck for some reason the fuck it method.com was available i love it Uh, (laughs) so i bought it but yeah, if anybody wants to sign up for when the book is released, which will be sometime in May on Amazon and in bookshops, uh, you can head to my website, um, michaelpa.com, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-P for Peter, A.com. And you can sign up and you can read chapter one and I'll email you when it's out. Go read chapter cool. one anyway, because I have and I love it. It's fucking awesome. It's a great book, mate. I well just done. signed up. Yeah. Oh, you did? Thank you. Um, it, it's, it's, I mean, but, but the whole thing about writing a book is nearly me putting my money where my mouth is about what the book's about anyway, because writing a book is, uh, I don't care how it, it, people might glamorize it. It's a fucking scary and painful and emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Um, the moment you meet the dreaded person in your life that's going to be your new shadow called your editor. Um, <laughs> is the moment your entire world gets ripped apart because you you submit what you think is amazing writing the first time to an editor. And I now know that what comes back is them ripping your soul out. But being, um, being, yes. being an audio engineer, though, I mean, you know, your editor could also easily be your director or your producer or producer, anything like that. Is yeah. it that hard yeah. to adjust to? No, it was. It was a completely different experience because what they did was they they, they told me things like, okay, that story's great, but nobody's going to care. Um, <laughs> the, yes. I mean, okay, yeah, fair the, enough. Yeah. The, a, a good book editor will literally nearly rewrite what you've got and take out the stuff that they know from their experience, the world is not going to find as interesting or fascinating in the same way it, it's portrayed in the book as as I do. Um, they, they push you in a good way, though, they, because they, they do. You know, but you the go first to them with couple of pages, they give you twenty five back and tell them and tell you to make seventy five more because the other seventy five that. You know, yep. like, yeah, junk. it's it's. Yeah. I, I've got to tell you. I mean, uh, as a therapeutic exercise, I'm actually a much better person for it. But I've I have drunk way too much tequila, staring at the ceiling at night through this process. At sometimes going, I don't know why I'm doing this because it really is hard. Writing a book is hard. Yeah, it's hard yeah. enough reading a book. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's for you and I, Robert, it definitely yeah. very yeah. hard. That's right. What's interesting? What's interesting is I'm actually using the plugin that we've been talking about i've been using it while i record because i'm currently recording the audiobook version of my book right that's, oh, that's nice. what i was joking about yeah. are you going to do a audiobook of your yeah book? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and i decided that uh because it because i want people to really feel that it's me who's talking to them the only person who could actually read the book would be me yeah Fair yeah enough. beautiful okay well we'll uh, keep an eye out for your book excellent thank Fuck you it. What could, what could happen? What's the worst that could <laughs> happen? That could happen? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know. Exactly. I mean, sign up for the book. What's fuck it? What's the worst that could happen? That's right. Well, I can tell you. Yeah. Me doing the sign off. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. Is it over?
The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Trimo. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website. Theproaudiosuite.com.